welcome to the Baldwin Kids Podcast, a space dedicated to discussing current events, mental health, and nerdy pursuits. I am the audiophonic K. That's disgusting because <laughs> I'm the well moisturized Vesta. Oh, at least you were at, you were prepared with one this time. Moisture. Moist. <laughs> <laughs> So, if you guys can't tell... We've got some new... Your girl, the baddest bitch in the game, has got a new microphone for us to record on. So, we're going to sound a lot clearer now. There won't be as many blips in audio, because there's been a lot. I listened to it. There's a lot of, there's a lot of shit. That really? In the yeah. So, I don't know what it was, but y'all... Someone's pointed it out to me before. There's, every once in a while, whenever you talked in some parts, there was a really low, deep buzzing zone. And I solved it once. But it kept coming back up, and I, to this day, do not know what it was. Like mm. I think it was the headset because they're not the. I mean, they're 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 they were they're catch instead of coach. But <laughs> but okay, here we are yeah. with a really. Um, but here we are. We're about to sound real clear and crystal, and less editing for me. <laughs> we are so crystal clear. clear. <laughs> We're here to snatch your wig. And if you think we can't, then bitch, hold down your lace. That's why the bitches of this world believe in. Got to be. I don't know. Got to be lace front and curls and edges. I don't know. That was garbage. Anyway, what are we talking about today? Things and stuff and stuff and things. Whoa, I need to probably. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, God, this is weird because we also have like in-ear monitors with this new setup. So I'm not used to being able to hear my own voice while like I'm talking. It helps with volume control. True. For both of us because I would mumble and you would do the opposite of mumbling. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> Which I'm sure was all sorts of fun to edit. Yeah. 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 No. <laughs> Anyway, so I guess we can uh, start with our very first brand new crystal clear rapid fire section. I almost pressed the wrong button. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Which uh, there's just a couple of things to a one a rest in piss to the nappiest of headed hoes himself, Don Imus. Who was that? You don't remember that guy? No. He made some kind of comment on some WNBA players and how they're a bunch of nappy headed hoes. Keep in mind, this is a, a crusty old white guy. <laughs> um, I'm Kay so- just now realized that there's an echo on every button we have for that, and it's very amusing to him. Into a. <laughs> um, also, in rapid fire news, the national smoking and smoking product ba- uh, age has been bumped up to 21. So, you know, you can... Um, I mean, they ju- they changed that in California a couple years ago. Right. It's been changing here and there in the state specifically. Like, Illinois changed it. Cali changed yeah. it. I think Indiana was 18, uh, for example. But... And I could be wrong. Don't at me. I'm just saying I know there were a couple states where it was still 18. Right. Um, But nationally, it's been raised to 21. But, you know, you can go and still get your leg blown off in uh, some other person's country to fight some other person's war for some other person's oil at 18. Yeah, yeah. It's it's got to be for a minute of, when people were sharing that around like that. I I didn't see the equivalence, but then it made sense because I'm like that seems very disconnected, but it also makes sense at the same time. It seems like a false equivalency mm-hmm. when upon first reading, but then you read it some more, and you're like, oh, mm-hmm. so you can die one way but not the other. Ooh, that is that picking. Yes, it's picking up. Oh my god. Okay, so let me take my keys out of my pocket. Because, because <laughs> this is picking up everything. This yeah, girl. Weird. Yeah, girl. Yeah, girl. Can you turn the gate on or something? It's, it is on, but okay. we're not going to have it here. So you'll hear everything. Uh, it makes you more careful, right? Right. All right, so what's next? Uh, bitch. <laughs> I, you know, honestly, I have a lot for the mental health section, which is going to be a surprise. Um... <laughs> I have a lot for the mental health section, so the uh, political section is going to be kind of short today. Um, for the Democrats and Republicans, the only thing I really have to mention is that our least favorite president, Anita, 
uh, has been fined for misappropriation of funds from a charity. Wow, I'm surprised. You know, I'm still baffled at the fact that Christians still blatantly support him. There's this tw- there's this video going around on Twitter of uh, mm-hmm. this gay guy visiting his family for Christmas. And in the background here, this woman goes, I don't care what he does. I support Donald Trump. And it just zooms in on the gay kid and he just goes, just some sips his wine. <laughs> I mean. And I'm just like, ooh, I'm glad I don't have to deal with that because you know who don't do that? The melanated. Mm-hmm. But also, I have to deal with the homophobia and the misogyny and mm-hmm. all that good shit. But yeah. And the misogynoir. The what? The what? Misogynoir. Is yeah, that misogyny you know, from a noir novel? What is that? No, that's a portmanteau of misogyny and noir, and it's specifically misogyny towards black women and black Oh, um, okay. I was like, what the hell is that? Because, I mean, obviously black women are on a whole nother level. Um, exactly. Here. <clears throat> President Anita Wall has paid $2 million in a court-ordered judgment for misusing his charity, New York Attorney General Letitia James said in a statement Tuesday. Not only has the Trump Foundation shut down for its misconduct, but the president has been forced to pay $2 million for misusing charitable funds for his own political gain, James said. Charities are not a means to an end, which is why these damages speak to the president's abuse of power and represent a victory for -for not-for-profits that follow the law. Wow. I'm surprised. (laughs) I'm just, I'm surprised. Wow. And the two million would actually go towards other charities, which are Army Emergency Relief, the Children's Aid Society, City Meals on Wheels, Give an Hour, Martha's Table, United Negro College Fund, which I'm sure that just did that. You know, you know, that was one of the things that when they started talking about cutting the Meals on Wheels thing, I'm like, y'all are just real disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Like that made me upset, Mm -hmm. mainly because I have a very close connection to that corporation and that service in general. Mm -hmm. And... Like, the thought of it just really, like, irked me. Because, I mean, y'all really just want older folks who can't go anywhere to just starve. Mm-hmm. Or just li- literally limit them getting food mm-hmm. every day. Like, fuck you. you. You're really garbage for that. Oh, there's more, though. There's also the United Way of National Capital Area and the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum. Hmm. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Each charity will receive a total of about four hundred seventy-five thousand. I'm I'm rounding because there's there's uh, all the way down to forty-one cents and ain't nobody. Oh, uh, the settlement also called for mandatory training requirements for the now defunct foundation's directors, uh, Junior, Ivanka, and Eric, which James says each has undergone. Oh, I'm just like I'm still baffled at the fact that there are people who still support him when he. Mocked a disabled reporter, um, was all sorts of vulgar on Beyonce's internet. I mean, granted, consistently, uh, is a consistent and objective liar. Yeah, like you can be like, hey, 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 he tells the truth. Does he? Has he released his tax refer- returns yet? Uh, has he actually shown that scalp of his that's actually covered by a bad weave? Not like, even a weave at this point. It's just a stalk of It's corn. a wish. <laughs> <laughs> a dream is a wish your scalp makes. <laughs> Why are you like this? <laughs> when it's past your week. So, yeah, I just. Why did it. I'm, you know. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> That needs to be a sound effect, too. Oh, it's a sound. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> be like the AOL log. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Welcome. You've got mail. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Do we have anything else for that? Oh, um, have you seen the story floating around about the... Um, no, no, no. This is kind of a gray area because this isn't really politics, but... Um, have you seen the story floating around about the 90-year-old clergyman that got... Uh, literally gagged on a crucifix. Yes, that made me happen. Which I'm over here I like... I love the exorcist. <laughs> which, for those who don't know, um, let me p- actually pull up the story because I... Da, da, da. Here we go. A teenager has been arrested on suspicion of torturing and killing a priest by ramming a crucifix down his throat and suffocating him. 
The youth, 19, is alleged to have been abused by the Catholic priest, who I will not say his name. Nope. Um, as was his father before him. Oh, yikes. Yeah. Ew. Like, there's, there's, there, there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Like, you know you got touched by father pervert. Why are you bringing your son into the same, you know... Like, you're just all right with that. Apparently, uh, the, 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 the kid's grandfather, <clears throat> or, you know, his dad's father, apparently committed suicide after finding out that his dad was abused. Yeah. So I'm just like, why are you? Why did you put your son in here in the first place? Well, you knew. And can the Catholic Church just not be a thing anymore at this point? Like yeah. y'all are literally covering up for, uh, like, I'm. Uh, the fact that Catholics are so extremely loudly anti-abortion and wanting to protect children, but also protecting these uh, pervy clergymen, is is a level of cognitive dissonance, cognitive dissonance that I would sooner jump off a bridge than succumb to. Exactly. But yeah, that, that was I wanted to talk mention that at the very least, but it's kind of um kind of in a weird gray area. Yeah. Um also, well, actually I think I might save that for the uh for what's happening later on or what's coming up section wise. Um let's see, cuz I did most of the outline, but I want to see if there's anything else to this that I wanted to mention. Do, 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 do. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's in the palate cleanse, too. Okay, so then let's move on to our next section, which is... Around the world. Which is just a quick mention about the... Or something to mention about the French protests. Um, Have you heard anything about... Anything else about it other than the pension age raise? No. So the funny thing about the pension age raise is that it is supposed... Is, it, 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 it is intended we'll be back up. <laughs> It is intended to be universal. Yep. As in everybody's retirement age gets raised to that. Yep. Do you realize why this is a problem? Mm-hmm. Why? I don't know. Tell me why. Uh, 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 uh. So, you know one of the main uh groups or one of the bigger groups that are really against this? Hmm. Ballerinas. Um because they normally retire with the current uh, pension plan. They retire at the age of 44, which is about as far as they as long as they can dance mm -hmm. because they start training for dancing as young as like six or seven years old. Right. And when you're doing all that movement, all that everything to your body, you start degrading faster than the rest of us. Right. So them having to go from that to starting to have to find other jobs, you know, at 44 when they aren't as mobile and ooh, that's not a good word to think um not quite you know not as abled as they once were right you know this is this is this is kind of ridiculous i mean there's other you know uh fields that that would cover as well though i'm at a loss to think of any right now just anything physical <laughs> a pretty really? much i mean true because like so, some of the more strenuous construction jobs like i worked a kind of construction job for several years i mean it was a uh, carpentry workshop but there's still a lot of noise a lot of heavy lifting a lot of fumes uh, a lot of injuries because i had a running thing of it was was not a normal week if i didn't bleed right i'm surprised it didn't get more infection or in infected cuts or anything right but then again one of the main things you're working with is denatured alcohol you know she is uh quite cleansing uh let me see you know what? We're not going to talk about that. Uh, just a quick shout out of, or a quick mention of support to each and every Jewish person affected by the uh, week of attacks. Have you not heard about that? Mm -hmm. I just. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, oh, no. OK, there we go. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. OK, so palette. Ready? Yeah. So we're going to move on to our palette. Cleon St. Giselle Nose Carter. I am the daughter, sister in Aruba, Oshu Kanchiyo. I am the mother. Okay. This is okay. Um, I am a whole mood. Moo moo. <laughs> uh huh. This is this is this new mic setup is really gonna take some getting used to. You'll be okay. I know I'll be okay. You gonna be alright. Funny that you mentioned that. <laughs> so that's not the first. Uh, that was, was what we call a segu. 
Not yet. Oh. Because I there were some other things I wanted to mention. Uh. Like, so one of the guys on my uh, friends list posted this unironically. Um, or posted this like trying to stir the pot. I just want you to read this wild uh, headline. Or listen to this wild headline. <clears throat> Transgender man gives birth to non-binary partner's baby with female sperm donor. Read that one more time, but slowly. Transgender mm. man gives birth, gives birth to non-binary partner's baby. Right, okay. With female sperm donor. With female sperm. Okay, that makes sense, though. Not on first listen, but you gotta really sit there and like read it for it to make sense. Let's see. Wait, no, it doesn't. What? <laughs> there is so much queerness in this. Okay, go I'm on. just skimming through it. Uh, let's see. Let me just read this. Proud dad Reuben Sharp today tells how he gave birth to a miracle baby in Britain's most modern family. Wait, should I? <clears throat> the 39-year-old transitioned to a man. Ugh, I hate that phrasing. We're going to move on. Uh, Reuben had... Still had maternal instincts, and six years ago stopped taking testosterone in the hope of one day having a child. And that dream came true when he and partner Jay had a bouncing baby. Jay is non-binary, so does not identify as male or female. The sperm donor was a trans woman, and even the doctor was transgender. Well, this is wild. This is... I'm here for every This is the gay agenda. Uh, Yeah. This is the gay agenda. You want to know who it doesn't affect? Everybody the fuck else. Mm Mm-hmm. I am just here for this because they're adorable. Hang on, let me just look at this picture. Like, that's the three of them. Aww. And they're just adorable. Um, let me see. What else was it that I wanted to speak on that was positive? Because, I mean, I've got my finale, but I want to make sure that there was nothing. <gasps> oh! So, this episode is going to premiere on Monday. Yeah. Guess what happens three days after Monday? New Year. Which means that cannabis is going to be legal for recreational use in Illinois. <laughs> um, what are you doing? I'm not doing anything. Mm-hmm. I'm just sitting at an angle because my I, I hate holding my phone that low. But go on. Um, but yeah, for those of us in the Chicagoland area and areas beyond. Uh, who partake in the plant. In areas beyond. What? That's such a... That's your buzz light here. <clears throat> On Wednesday, January 1st, recreational marijuana officially becomes legal across the state of Illinois. But with the new law, there are stipulations on how much pot you can purchase and where it can be smoked. If you're over the age of 21 and an Illinois resident, you can possess 30 grams of cannabis... Uh, 500 milligrams of THC products and 5 grams of concentrate. If you're not a resident, then those amounts are cut in half. Marijuana can only be smoked. I can literally hear my finger touching this phone. Yep. Anyway. uh, Cannabis can only be smoked inside a house, away from public view, and not in a room where children are present. Local law enforcement and a Winnebago County board... This is uh, is a news out of um, uh, Rockford. Mm -hmm. Uh... Anyway, local law enforcement and a Winnebago County board member weighed in on the new law. Uh, It's new to all of us, so we'll just have to do the best we can, Sergeant Ryan Heaven with the Winnebago County Sheriff's Office says. Although it's legal, it is our hope that people are responsible. Rockford Police Assistant Chief Deputy. That is a mouthful of a title. (laughs) Rockford Police Assistant Chief Deputy. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, living in an apartment will kind of make it weird because certain apartments will follow the state laws more than the federal laws and vice versa. Yeah. So, when in doubt, check your lease. Do-do-do. And a sidebar, I've been saying cannabis instead of marijuana. There's a lot uh, with the history of the word marijuana. And seeing as how cannabis is the actual scientific name of the plant, that's what I prefer. I prefer to use. Just like how I keep calling the president Anita because... We don't acknowledge. Um, there's, let's see. Do, do, do. Um, for trying to cultivate it, you still do have to be a medical patient, unfortunately. 
Um, medical patients also get the privilege of not having to worry about uh, dispensaries necessarily being sold out as easily by yeah. the recreational buyers. Let me see if I can find the actual amount. But, do, 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 okay, I don't see it in here, but if I remember correctly, dispensaries are required to maintain 40% of their stock specifically for uh, medical patients. Mm-hmm. Which um, I'm still heavily contemplating uh, working towards uh, getting my medical card because, I mean... um but yeah i'm excited i honestly am excited to see what happens with this in the next few years like what if it starts uh migrating out of dispensaries and into more um mainstream areas yeah like because uh my roommate and i were walking around costco and saw like all of the alcohol this that and the other and started joking like what if they what if costco started selling cbd gummies I mean, CVS has already done it. Walgreens already doing it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> you don't sound super thrilled. I mean, I know you're not you're, you're not down with the plan. I'm not. Well, other than you're a CBD. Yeah, that's about all I use. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, da-da-da. And last but not least, with the segue that my dear Vesta started, but I want I derailed unfortunately. Yeah, but I, I wanted to end it with this because we're ending that with segue something. was a rental. I... <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand. Want to know sometimes. what's great? What? I have this set to a fairly low setting. You still black bar the audio recording. <laughs> Is that what it's called? That's what I'm calling it. Black bar? Black bar. Yep. I, I feel like there's Red a Red bar, black bar, same thing. I feel like there's a Beatles reference I can make here. Who? <laughs> we only reference people with talent on this podcast. Oh. So then so then I'm specifically talking about Evan Rachel Wood covering the Beatles. Okay, cool. Because the Beatles are um Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Because they're um Anyway, listen, Mother get, Quincy Jones shaded them. They're 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 not coming back from Greece, except I, for um, who's the one that's cool? Um, work with Michael Jackson, Paul who's McCartney. That? Yeah, that's the only only one. He's like in his nearly eighty and still touring and moving around. Yeah, and stuff. I, I like him. That's like, about it. Do, do we know if he's problematic or anything at all? I don't think so. Because this is if if he's not, then he's he is one of those cases of where you're you mind your own business and yep. age gracefully. Yeah, out there with like Paul Rudd. Yeah, because Paul McCartney still looks fantastic mm-hmm. for his age. Yeah. Um, but last but not least, since Vessa was met referencing it, uh, To Pimp a Butterfly has been named the album of the decade. <laughs> the fucking reverb. <laughs> I don't know why We're it tickles me. We're simple people on this podcast. I don't know why it tickles me, but it does. <laughs> I am trying to... Read. <laughs> In a latest report by Medica- Metacritic website, um, blank, okay, that's weird. Anyway, Kendrick Lamar's 2015 album, To Pimp a Butterfly, has topped the best albums of the decade list, which was based on decade end lists made by every music news media critics. Kendrick's 2012 album, Good Kid Mad City, had also secured its place on at number seven on the list. Look at your hu- short husband flourish. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It's Um, not inside of me, but this is flourishing. Vesta! What? Stop! What can I help you? The Sahara Desert is dry and needs nourishment. (laughs) Ma'am. Ma'am. Come get your rope. (laughs) I still say we should have had that for part of the intro. Oh, my God. Um, But let's see. Uh... The way that it worked is that if an album, depending on the album's ranking on each year end list, gave it a certain number of points, mm-hmm. and you know each further rank down equals fewer points, and so on and so forth. Right. Um. So wow, this this list is black as hell. Yep. Uh, it's almost so, like we created culture. Uh, I mean, anyway. <laughs> uh. So the list is. <laughs> Why are you making that face? What, what, what in the retail get out of my line was that? Just <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. Go away, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so let's see. The list is 
to Pippa Butterfly, K Dot. Yeah. Um, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy by uh, Kim Kardashian Staffer. <laughs> you mean the Silver Surfer? I'm sorry. Who? Okay, we definitely need to turn gate on because I can hear the chair creaking every time I move. What it is, See, we're two thinking of two different things. <laughs> oh, oh wow, you can see it all. Yeah, that's uh-huh. cool. I like it. You, but, d- no. Yeah. We don't need, yeah. like, I was joking yeah, with the mic yeah. earlier, me trying yeah, to you ASMR. Know it doesn't matter. Let me finish this damn list. Yeah. So, uh, To Pimp a Butterfly, K-Dot, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy by Some Dude We Don't Acknowledge, uh, Lemonade by Queen Mava, Beyonce, Channel Orange by Frank Ocean, which I still need to listen through. I've never heard that. Are you being wait? Are you being shady or serious? No, I'm, I've never like listened to it. I can't tell. I'm not you. shady. I'm telling you, I'm not shady. I'm telling you, I'm not. If You're I was telling being shady. Me. I wouldn't say that. I would start laughing. You uh, know this. I mean, okay. Um, there was a lot of Frank Ocean's music I've never listened to. Same. I feel kind of bad about it. I actually need to. I actually do want to listen through Channel Orange because uh, one of my faves loves that album. I really like uh, Blonde. He doesn't really use drums. He doesn't have In like the first five or six songs of that album, he doesn't really use drums now that I think about it. Anyway, uh, Body Talk by Robin. Yeah. Uh, oh, Blonde by Frank Ocean. Good Kid, Mad City, K Dot. Don't touch my hair. A Seat at the Table by Salon. <laughs> Uh, Anti by Rihanna. Yeah. And The Suburbs by Arcade Fire. Never heard that one. Not shady. Never listened to that. Eh. Yeah, this is, this is, uh, this is formatted a little weirdly. Are you telling me everybody's favorite black woman, Ariana Grande, didn't make that list? Listen. <laughs> oh wow, they reanalyzed it, I guess, or updated it uh, about a week ago. Oh, so this it's actually been edited. Okay. So I just checked the actual site. Number one is still "To Pimp a Butterfly." Yep. And "To Pimp a Butterfly" is still one of my absolute favorite albums. Yep. Like top two at eight, number two. Yep. Um. But yeah, that's still at the top, followed by I don't know. Uh, Ghosting by Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. Damn by K Dot. Black Messiah by D'Angelo. Duh, duh, duh. Yeah, a lot of them are still the same. Um, you know, my old roommate actually really liked uh, the suburbs. Who are who? <gasps> Janelle Monae's Arch Android or Arch Android made it on the list too. It's Arch Android. Arch Arch. Whatever. Either way, it's sickening. <laughs> what? Am I wrong? But anyway, I don't even think that picked up. What me mocking? No, you? me whispering. I definitely heard you on the other end. Yeah, but that doesn't mean the gate's gonna pick it up. Uh, oh wait, okay. You get now. I get it. Yeah, it's girl, weird. Yeah, this is. I'm not. This so is we're not feed. hearing this going. Oh, this okay. is raw feed. Okay, That's don't not. don't mind us being weird nerds because I'm sure half of the stuff uh, I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking. <laughs> well, anyway, so what do we <laughs> anyway? Um, but yeah, I absolutely love that album. If you haven't given it a chance to listen or haven't listened to it, you definitely should. It is by far my favorite album. Um, it is whew, there's a lot there, especially because a lot of it is so really, really raw dealing with a lot of his emotions, dealing with his depression, dealing with like. Uh, the song You, like, it. I still maintain that it sounds like at the beginning of the second part of the song. Um, what? We're running on like 30 minutes. Oh, okay. Then I'll just wrap it up real quick. <laughs> um, I'll maintain that the, 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 the second part of the second part of that song, or rather, yeah, he tried to sound, tried to sound like he was crying at first in the song and then by the end of that part was actually in tears in the studio like if you listen to how he sounds 
you can definitely hear a marked difference. Mm. But anyway, speaking of music, we're actually going to move on to our next musical break. <laughs> you mean the first musical break, which is... Um, which one? Meeny, meeny, money, that. Early morning limo, Mr. Fahrenheit. All right. As always, everybody... Oh, I'm going to resist the urge to do what I wanted to do. Uh, as always, everyone, get into it, get your life, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. Don't mind me still voguing. Hello. Anyway. <clears throat> wow, that was a lot. That okay. was indeed a lot. Anyway, welcome back, guys, gals, and people who know better. Um, we're going to move on to our mental health section, as per usual. Um, this comes with our disclaimer. <clears throat> Vesta and I are too loud mouthed with some recording software, a sickening mic, and a touch of experience about navigating towards better mental health. This mic is really sickening, though. Um, we talk about these things to do our part to combat the stigma around them. We are not mental health professionals in any way, shape, or form, so please, please, please take what we say with an old lang syne of salt. What is that? <laughs> it's a reference to that song that everybody plays on New Year's Eve. What song is that? Oh, that one. Yeah, it's that Caucasian shit. Anyway, what are we talking about today? What do we sing on New Year's then? Because even Prince played that after he told somebody to come get your rope. <laughs> Inti way. Uh huh. Um. So, like I said, I wanted to keep it a little bit of a surprise. Um. So. Buttons. I figured, since it is both the last episode of the decade, as well as the last episode of the year, we can do one final check-in, both for recently and just talking about how we've kind of evolved as people in the past 10 years. I don't remember the past 10 years. <laughs> I don't. Shall I go first, then? Yeah. All right. Um... So let's see. Uh, oof, oof. So in the last 10 years, I graduated high school, spent an ill-advised uh, three semesters at Bible college. And I mean, I made some good friends. I made some good friends. Shout out to those of us, those who are, uh, you know, still hanging around despite my, uh, uh-oh, what's that That's line? Oh. I, I it started doing the looping thing and I was trying to stop it before it started saying J five times in a row. All right, so we're good. And just add a Vogue beat under it. No. Anyway, <laughs> um, spent a now ill-advised uh, three semesters. Though I would I would still do it again if given the opportunity. Well, I'm kind of fifty fifty about that now, but that'll kind of make more sense as uh, I go through the kind of review. Um, I came out fully. And unashamedly, I um, had my two longest uh, relationships. Um, actually, in the past 10 years, I think I've had all three of my longer relationships. Whoa. Yeah. That's a long time. Um, <clears throat> what else? I, whew, there, I did a lot of uh, unpacking. Um, cause I, especially like coming out of high school, I was dealing with a lot of internalized, uh, self-hate and anti-blackness. 
Which, by the way, I called somebody out on a Growler for that because mm-hmm. uh, he was on some self hating shit. And then added a, wanted to be petty, but added something to the end of his bio saying, I'm not into black guys. It's just a preference. And if you're not part of my preference, I'm going to block you. And I'm just, and I messaged him because I knew I was going to get blocked anyway, but I was feeling petty and I was kind of waiting on something. I'm like, I used to be just like you, avoiding dating black guys, calling it a preference, but uh, these white gays will gladly uh, uh, tap dance, cross your corpse to get ahead. So, you know, do with that what you will, but I hope you do end up doing better in the future. Ooh. Um, like I said, I was feeling petty. <laughs> um, but I did so much unpacking of that. And I know that a big part of that uh, had to do with my musical taste. Because while I said I liked some hip hop, and the fact was that I did like some hip hop at the time, I still, for a while, did a lot of uh, avoiding it and trying to do my best to avoid my blackness. But the fact of the matter is, is that I cannot escape it. And it is something that makes me magnificent. Um, and I know like a part of that self-discovery and a lot of that self-critique and a lot of that uh, working towards having a better image of myself and, and, and of my blackness came from, you know, on a whim, funnily enough, listening to Good Kid, Mad City. Mm-hmm which is still one of my favorite albums. Um, but if I hadn't have done that, I don't think like, I don't think I would have gone to Wakanda con. I don't think we would be doing this podcast. I don't think I would be playing the sidewalk game with random Caucasians on the sidewalk. No, I will not move for you. One, because you're smaller than me. Two, I was probably here first anyway. All right. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, what else? Um, I was and am still actively and really trying to work on my mental health because, you know, rewind back to leaving high school, I was not in a good place and I was doing a lot of lying to myself to try to think that I was. So I had all sorts of complicated relationship or complicated, well, complicated relationship. <laughs> But complicated relationships uh, with both of my parents, because by then they divorced and I had uh, I was still coming off of a a relatively long uh, suicidal streak because I thought that my dad was trying to replace me. Um, So, like, especially when I was with my ex, he was pushing me to work on, you know, improving my mental health, which was, you know, getting medication or getting medicated, going to see a uh, going to see a doctor or going to see a therapist. I mean, I guess kind of same difference. Mm. Um, And, you know, me pushing towards that was also me seeing as as I was working towards getting better. I was also seeing a lot of the same patterns, a lot of the same thought processes, a lot of the same mistakes and stuff with other people. And I just like I'm one of those people that fully and, and completely stands therapy. Like, even if you think you're OK, I still say, you know, go for a couple of sessions. You might be fucked up because right. I thought I was relatively OK when I first started going to therapy. Mm-hmm. And just doing more digging and digging and digging, um, finding out that there's not necessarily that there's anything wrong with me, but that there's a lot of things that I need to work on mm-hmm. and that I am actively working on and trying to work on getting better. Mm-hmm. Um, in the past 10 years, started the Sickening Podcast. And, oh, let me rewind. Met an amazing person that's ah. sitting right next to me. Hello. Um, started, started starting off my 2017 yeah. You moved up here in 2017. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. You yeah. know how I know? Oh, yeah, true. Because you moved here right before New Year's, yeah. and we did, we went bar hopping 2017 into 2018. Yeah. And then 18 and 19 was in my old apartment. Yeah. And 19 and 20, I still don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm going to bed. <laughs> um, It's been a long decade. You know, I've... I've gotten better in some aspects and I've gotten worse in other aspects and it's just a process. Mm. And I, um, I don't know. Lately I've been trying to do okay, but between the kind of weirdness of the days between Christmas and new years and now I've just been in kind of a fog and the fog has been really manifesting itself in me not having an, having an appetite. 
Because mm. I think like the Costco run I made with my roommate earlier today, um, that was the first time I'd eaten in like since like eight the previous morning and it was one today Mm -hmm. and even then i was eating because i'm like okay i know i need to eat because i can feel a hunger migraine starting to build right even though i wasn't really that hungry i still did um but i'm i don't know i'm moving forward i want to i want to do more in 2020 i um and i'm i'll try to remember to repeat this towards the end of the show i am going to be um taking steps to be a lot more engaging with our listeners cuz you know i want us to have more listeners i want us to have a wider reach i want us to you know keep spreading the idea of talking about one's mental health so that way it can be you know kind of considered on the same level as like you know, you can say I'm feeling kind of depressed today and be on the same wavelength as, yeah, I'm, I've, I've, I've got a cold. <laughs> I don't feel good. <laughs> huh? 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 <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> I have that in my head when you said sick. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway. But, yeah, I've got some plans. I've got some things. Um, I've actually got a bit of an announcement for the end of the show, but... You'll have to wait until the end of the show. It's something that won't be launching until the end of the uh, the end of uh, January, though, most likely. Though, you know, keep tabs on our Facebook page, and we'll be able to keep you posted. <laughs> <laughs> um, but go ahead, That's press fine. what you were gonna press. It's fine. Go ahead and do it. We're gonna abuse the hell out of that button, aren't we? Too late. It's too late. <laughs> no, I wish that button was still there. I mean, there are things we can probably get rid of, truth be told. Like what? Mm -hmm. I just spent time doing that. We don't really use the drag her, slay her, read her. Yeah, we don't use that. But anyway, that's stuff that we can talk about off the air. But it's been a long 10 years. You know, I've broken hearts. I've had my heart broken. I've been kicked out of a parent's house for being queer. Um, I, uh, lost my license. I got it back. I spent all sorts of money that I probably shouldn't have. I got nearly blackout drunk for my 21st birthday. I say nearly because there's like little patches of patches that are missing from that night, but not like extended periods of time. And I'm not sure if I was falling asleep or just blacking out a little bit. (laughs) But I mean, when you have like several of a drink called a mind eraser oh my God. they were so tasty though don't roll your eyes at me <laughs> ma'am miss madam miss madam Ma miss <laughs> anyway but yeah it's been an eventful 10 years it's been it has been it has been <laughs> <laughs> It's been a wild 10 years, and I can't wait to see what the next 10 bring, other than my 30s, which I would say is gay death, but I'm black and fat, so that doesn't count for me. Is it really considered gay death if if the gays have already committed suicide, so there you go. Whew, there's a lot to unpack there. (laughs) They don't already kill themselves to... Ooh, that's shade. The button is there. I was going to say, if the white gays don't already kill themselves trying to like, give them ass and selfies, just... <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, trying to imitate black women. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> wow, that is a narrow spike. Anyway. Uh, Vesta Dwelling. So the past 10 years have been weird. They've been very weird. I don't remember that anymore. It's been a problem for like the past... Like, my entire life. I don't remember much anymore. I only remember big things. Mm-hmm. Um, what happened in my 2010s? When did I graduate? 2014? Oh, my God, you're a fetus. I know. Um, <laughs> the gate probably didn't catch any of that. <laughs> I called Vesta a fetus. And I said, I know, right? But anyway. Um, wow. Yeah, I graduated high school. Didn't think I'd do that. I got started in music. When was that? You said you started making music when you were around 16, right? Yeah, okay, so that was definitely in my 2010s. Um, 
Wow. Had all my relationships in the 2010s. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, Met my best friends in the 2010s. Mental health didn't really become a thing until the past two years. Uh, Lost my father in the 2010s. Made some sickening music in the 2010s. Yeah, I actually started releasing music. Made some cringy music to start. Oh my god. (laughs) Oh my god. I might just play that at one point. Just play a really garbage song that I made. Probably like one of the first and just see how that goes. Yike. Mm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's some crunchy rap Ape shit. Um, I've never seen a crowd go with it. Um, yeah, it's just been a lot. And so much that I just don't really remember it. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of bottle- yeah. memory bottleneck. Yeah, it's, yeah. Because I don't. I remember the, I remember parts of my 2010s that were random parts of like my life, but I don't really remember, you know, like the the, the gist of it or whatever. Does that make sense? Kind of like yeah. I don't I don't remember a lot of it. You remember the trees, not the the undergrowth. Yeah, yeah. I remember the branches, not the leaves. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's been a wild ride. That's all I can really say about it. Learned a lot about myself in the 2010s. Mm-hmm. So it came into myself in, in the 2010s. Um, yeah. And that's, that's what I think I'm doing, too. really what all it's been. Yeah. Don't have much else to say other than that. It's very uneventful. Very anticlimactic, but... Hey, you know, it's, it's something. Uh, you grew out a, 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 a high top. I, I knew how to use my hair. I knew how to take care of my hair. No, I, didn't, I had high top. I... I uh, that was when the, the high tops hey, were in the 2010s. You know what we both did? Hmm. Grew a beard in the 2010s. Yeah, we sure did, didn't we? Yeah, because I wasn't able to grow one until like 2011, 2012-ish. And I think I've always been able to grow one, but I'd always shave it down. Like, you thought it looked raggedy, and now look at you. I mean, it down. sure did look raggedy when it first started growing. It was yeah, but now look at you. Stunning. <laughs> Stunning. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Um... But yeah, uh, mental health has been a huge thing, uh, especially in the past six or seven years or so for me. Because uh, like I said, that was when I you know, started going to therapy. And my first therapist was a very sweet cishet white woman mm-hmm. um, who kind of gave me Anna Kendrick vibes. Well, um, we stand a queen. <laughs> but... Uh, <clears throat> Why am I thinking of one of those damn Wendy Williams videos of people just making noises? <laughs> anyway, um, Shit. but uh, she, you know, she was a really good uh, starter therapist for me. Um, because I'd never gone to therapy, and the very concept of it freaked me out, especially because growing up, you know, I was always admonished that that therapy shit is some white people shit, and it's not. It ain't. It, it's for everyone of every demographic. Yeah. Um, because everybody could use a little help. But started with her, and I made some decent progress, kind of unpacking a lot of the issues that I was dealing with, and then you know. She was like eight and a half months pregnant. And she's like, yeah, so I'm going on maternity to leave. And I go, oh, my God, thank you. I can finally talk about it now. And she cracked up. Well, oh, because she, she, she's, a, she's, a, she's a relatively small person. Mm-hmm. And so it was pretty obvious, like two or three months in even. Mm-hmm. But you're, you can't say anything because that's assuming. And that's a huge case of making an ass out of yourself yeah. if the person's not actually pregnant. But, you know, she moved, she, uh, I ended up going up with her mentor, Mm -hmm. her mental mentor, right? who, who was a lot rougher of a therapist. And I don't think I would have made as much progress had I started off going to him. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I was too fragile. I was dealing with a lot. I was having a lot of issues, focusing on a lot of things. Um, and a lot of issues like making excuses for everything that I did. And I'm at the point now where I'm much better at knowing when I'm getting ready to make an excuse for something, calling myself out on it and trying to correct the behavior. Um, you know, I'm doing better overall. Granted, I've still got cuts and scars and stuff from where I was, but, you know, there's bandages on them now and they're healing. Mm-hmm. 
and we're just going to keep working through and finding each cut and putting a band-aid on it putting a putting some kind of oops. that was you was it yep anyway putting some kind of salve on it if you will mm-hmm. and working on healing it and that stuff that's actually moving on to the second part of what I wanted to talk about for this. Um, you know, that's kind of a part of what I want to bring into 2020. I want to bring in, <clears throat> you know, establishing boundaries. I want to bring in not being as much of a yes man. I'm going to bring in focusing on me and my happiness because I've spent the last 28 years, well, I guess 25 ish, uh, trying to do that for other people more than myself. Mm-hmm. So like certain things that I want to bring in to 2020, like more specific is not chasing people for their attention. Yep. Like I can reach out, but I'm not gonna. And I mean, that sounds kind of harsh, especially for some people that are a bit more introverted, a bit less talkative or what have you. That's not who I'm talking about. You know, there's people like if I wanted to meet up with somebody and they keep stringing me along, you're just going to get left on red. I don't have time. I don't have patience. Um, The other thing that I'm fully intending on bringing into 2020 is no, as a complete sentence. Yep. Because there are so many times there have been so many times that I would run myself ragged trying to make myself happy and saying yes to everything. So 2020 is also going to be my year of no <laughs> what about you what do you want to bring into this new decade sleep <laughs> bitch I mean same sleeping sleeping more yes I don't sleep as it is <laughs> that will solve a lot of my problems oh. sleep in a better job <sighs> Mm-hmm. that's it yeah. Oh, yeah. That's something that I'm looking at too. Is upgrading myself. Just like we upgraded the sound equipment. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I, don't uh-huh, bitch. I don't even know where I got that little giggle at the end from. You've been. You've done it a lot. I know, but I don't remember where I got it from. Is the issue? Customer service. <laughs> Thanks for shopping. Uh-huh. Yeah. Literally. No. Yeah. No. That's me and my job. Oh yeah. Uh, oh. Have a good one, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> have a good one. Enjoy your food. Big, have you way, nasty, smelling, fat, fat. have you had anyone who hit you with a U two by accident, or do you not say enjoy your food at the end? Um, I've had a couple of that, and <laughs> I don't care. But I do it all the time. Mm-hmm. I I don't know why that's fun. The not necessarily the enjoy your food. Thanks, you too. I can never come back here. Oh my god. Oh, please, <laughs> please never come back. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What? Anyway. Yeah. So what's next here? Sleeping, taking better care of yourself and a better job. Yup. I'm here for all th- all of these things. But yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, you know, I would say going into the next year, don't set like these, these um, lofty resolution goals. You know, set something attainable. Don't be like, I'm going to lose 100 pounds and run a triathlon, girl. If if you're absolutely sure that you can, go for it. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. Anyway, um, like me personally, I want to. And before I continue on this route, um, you know, for those of us who are big and want to stay big, more power to you. You know, if you're happy at your size, be happy at your size. I don't want to be this big. There's nothing. I. I don't want to be this big because all of my cute clothes are small, <laughs> and I don't want to buy more. Yeah. And fair. I, I, I like how I look more. I like. I still have my ID photo from when I was down near my lowest and took one of my uh, school uh, ID photos. I look like a completely different person. Like, if, like if I if I slim down some more and put on a hat, I look like a darker version of my dad. <laughs> it's uncanny. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't want to, I'm not planning, like, if I do lose a shit ton of weight, hooray, because that's what my goal is. I want to get back down to where I can fit in those uh, cute stretch jeans I got a while ago. But I want to be healthier. I want to be able to get up the stairs to my apartment without (laughs) sounding like I'm huffing and puffing and getting ready to blow somebody's house down. 
Um, I want to be able to bend down and touch my toes again. I could do that, I think. Um, I want to get back in the gym at some point, but that's going to wait. I have to wait until I, uh, get a better paying job. Um, but like, I want to set smaller goals, you know, smaller goals that build toward the larger goal. What about you? What you um, that's it. Okay. <laughs> that's all I got. <clears throat> all right. Well, in that case, are we going to move on to our, uh, next Break musical. Yeah. All right. What we got, BB? What do we have? Well, you've got the. Okay, we have a remix of a song called So Much by a group called Vanguard that has gone MIA forever. Oh, no. It was a remix by Mr. Fahrenheit, so yay. Oh, so he gave us two things. Okay, I'm ready. I'm excited. So, <clears throat> as always, y'all. Get into it, get your life, and we shall return. me but well come okay, back you know <laughs> so anyway any the fuck way uh, bitch oh yeah <coughs> so we're back and better than ever um no we still back on our bullshit anyway uh so we're back and we're gonna go right into our nerdy shit true yes so uh what do you want to start with um, what's even on the list? I'm not even looking at the list. So right now we've got three things. We've got the last, the most recent two Steven Universe episodes. Let's start with that. Oh, okay. So, what are your thoughts? Um, Steven is chill the fuck out. Steven is just being pink diamond. Is he not though? No, but he is. But he isn't. But he is. But he isn't. But he is. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I don't like those powers. What? I don't like them. Oh, the ones that are just popping up now? Yeah, I don't like it. I mean, he's basically just doing what Pink Diamond did. Pretty sure that that's what happened. I just realized something. What? Remember that shield he made during the Change Your Mind special? That's the same one. Uh-huh. The, you know, Except this one was perfectly round. So was the other one. The one in oh, Change Your Mind was, was it was made of di- was made of uh, rhomboids, yes, but was st- was kind of lumpy. For lack of a better phrase. I mean, I think that's kind of specific. But, yeah, mm-hmm. it's the same shield. Yeah, it's it's the same type of panels. Um, So, I guess we can just start off with episode nine. Yeah. So, can we just start off by saying Shep is fucking adorable? True. And I would love to see more of them in the show. True. 
Um, and apparently they're voiced by India Moore. Mm-hmm. So we stand. Yep. Because they're really coming up. True. Like, they're really cool. Uh, what I are like they, what, the they were in a movie recently, too. India Moore. Uh, oh, God. What movie were they? Queen and Slim. Yeah, I've heard a lot of backlash about that movie lately. So. Uh, I've, I've heard a lot of good, and I've heard a lot of bad. I do want to see it at some point in the very near future. Yeah, so. Um, Dope. Especially because Daniel Kaluuya's in it. Dope. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Sadie and Shep are adorable. Sadie is still super tiny. Yeah, she, yeah. And Steven's trying to be in control of everything while having control over nothing. Mm-hmm. So Not even her. himself. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm wondering when we're going to actually see that be explored or if we're going to see that be explored. Because apparently... I've yeah, heard, it is. Because I... When it, Okay, so I keep he- kept hearing that there were only going to be 10 episodes for Steven Universe That's Future. That's bullshit. <laughs> you think they would end on that? Mm-hmm. They would not end on some shit like this. They, Oh, hey, here's a new lapis. Hey, here's um, fucking... What is that fucking called? Um, what's it, the fucking the ruby and the aquamarine, whatever they were. and Bluebird. Yeah, that. And... All this other shit that's in the trailer, and we're just going to end it right here. No, they're not. It'd be a season, probably. Mm-hmm. It's not ending on 10 episodes. Yeah. Um, I'm just... Yeah, I don't know. I like... It's I'm, not ending on 10 episodes. I'm hoping it's not. It's it's not. <laughs> it's not. Because... They're not going to tease a million things that, that are going to happen in the fucking opening alone and then not touching half of it. Yeah, because we're still waiting on... You gotta figure out what's wrong with White. You gotta figure out what's wrong with um, the, the diamonds, giant alien thing. The diamonds ha- have a main not nan appearance. And they're going to be here. <laughs> diamonds, Spinel... Jasper ain't been touched on yet. Jasper's still on her piccolo shit. Yeah, Jasper's been <laughs> on some <laughs> shit. And, yeah, so... Just being, just being angry in the wilderness. Mm-hmm. Uh... We we haven't seen Greg since it's since his haircut. It was only a couple episodes ago. He'll be back. He's probably depressed. I mean, yeah, because he's probably been growing that hair out since you know Stephen was a he never was a wee cut little, it. Yeah. <laughs> he never cut it off since Stephen was a wee little baby. Even before that, he still ain't cut it. When he was Mister Universe, mm-hmm. who could drive his van into your heart. Mm-hmm. Um, that I'm still gagging about that scene in that though, Father. Go inside. Because Steven was like, oh. We um, love Dragon Ball Z. I mean, yeah, that he was giving me some Gohan, uh, Super 2 Gohan. He just is Gohan. You, no, no. Yeah. Steven's not as school centric as Gohan. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't at me about mm-hmm. one of my favorite characters. Mm-hmm. Bitch. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that whole thing was weird uh, with him like wanting to try to control what everybody's doing. Yeah, because that was the only thing he had. Now he has nothing left. And now he's kind of lost, I guess. So all he's going to do is do what Pink Diamond did and go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where um, he can have control of his life. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that was nine, and then ten. That was... um. That was a lot. That was throwback to old Steven Universe where they chucked a lot of story into one episode mm-hmm. without even doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. Ten was a lot, though. Captain Steven is a metaphor for repressed emotions. <laughs> Whoops. Captain Steven is a what you say in the dark will come to the light. Not even that. It's just bottle of emotions. Because Steven was really trying to let there was just a metaphor for what he's actually doing. Mm-hmm. I can't let anybody hear what I actually think. So he Gotta keep that locked up. Mm-hmm. And so he tells something that he thinks is... Um, he puts it into a metaphorical bottle, except the metaphorical bottle has a leak in it and wreaks all sorts of havoc. Well, no. And blows just, out the whole wall of his house. It's just kind of... Doesn't the bottle have a leak in it? He's got too much, in the, he's got too much to put in the bottle. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot. Mm-hmm. There's a there's like There's so much, it's hard to like really pinpoint one specific thing. Yeah. Because it seems like Steven is running from something. But he's he been running. But he doesn't know what he's running from. He's been running. He's ran the entire show. He's been running the whole show. I would say he's been running since he found out his who and what he is. 
No, he's been running before. He was running from his mother before that. I guess. And so now all that he's running from is coming back, and he ain't got none. He ain't got no choice but to deal with it. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's. Uh... I'm excited for the rest. I'm excited for um, white and blue, and you. I'm just excited for the diamonds and spinel because uh-huh. they're finna be back. Mm-hmm. I certainly hope so. Yeah, they will. We will have to see. They're they're not gonna not show up <laughs> for at least a little while. Yeah. Cause it, yeah, because that last episode, because I kept hearing everywhere that it was only supposed to be 10 episodes. No. So what I'm wondering is if when people were saying 10 episodes, they meant 10 30-minute blocks. So technically 20 episodes. I mean, that could be a thing, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's for the season. Yeah, that, that, that makes a lot more sense since the show is normally in, you know, 11-minute blocks. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it was nice to see the gems fighting again, and that running gag with the cactus, the cactus, the uh, cactus needles, prickers, whatever you want to call them, needles, spines, spines, needles. <laughs> yes, sure. but no, <laughs> we got a little bit of crackhead pearl again. True, sure. because <laughs> Garnet socked <laughs> cactus Steven, <laughs> and Pearl's just like, why? <laughs> So yeah, I'm excited to see the rest. As am I. Uh. Anyway, sorry, we spent a little time playing with this mic, y'all. Uh, da, da, da. and the other thing was is that people keep saying, you know, I keep seeing posts floating around on Beyonce's internet that um we're still waiting for a live action Treasure Planet and live action Atlantis. We ain't never good in it, but yeah. I wish we would, but like. So, in the spirit of us being giant nerds and talking about people who are sickening, who would you have play who? Mm, I didn't pull my list up. Uh, you said you're doing Treasure Planet, right? Yep. Okay, well then I will take Atlantis. So, obviously, we're going to have Tobey Maguire be... <laughs> I'm kidding. Wrong Spider-Man. Tom Holland or uh, Cole Sprouse for Milo. Neither. Really? Neither. Who would you have then? Someone that's not them. <laughs> the last time the internet casted a goddamn character, we got Emma Watson as Ms. Belle. Belle. Appearance-wise, she was good for the no. part. Who would you have suggested then? Not Emma Watson. Someone that could act and could sing. Okay, the singing part I'll give you. No, acting. She couldn't. She didn't do any acting in that movie. Inti way. <laughs> like, Who would you suggest as Milo movie? then? Is Milo? Mm-hmm. Because mm. Cole Sprouse even did a Halloween costume of Milo and looked dead the hell on from the movie. Also can't act. Sure. I don't know. He, I'm, he yeah. acted like himself in Sweet Life, and that was it. <laughs> He's done nothing else. Very prolific. Yeah, but Tom Holland makes a good kind of plucky younger person. Uh, I don't know. I'm, besides, this is me picking people. You know who I kind of want to see is Kita. Letitia Wright. No. Why? No. Why? It needs to be more boss ass than that. Like, Letitia Wright is sickening, but not Kita. Letitia Wright, by the way, is uh, uh, Shuri from no. Black Panther. No. No. Because <laughs> the only other people I can think of are all, I mean, not too old, but too old, if that makes sense. I mean, I guess, but Letitia Wright's not really. I see Tessa. Ooh, that would be an interesting choice. Yeah, like Tessa. Okay. Uh, King Nadak would have to be Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Obviously. Um, I got it. Let me actually pull up the characters from the movie so I can remember. Because, like, I, I have faces to characters, but I can't remember specifics. Um... Wow, we love background noise. <laughs> that the gate probably blocked out, but whatever. Um, da, 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 da. Come on. Of course, technology is being slow. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's weird. Uh, 
I'd have if I could bring like if I could age people to the right ages, I'd have Tommy Lee Jones be uh Who's Tommy Lee Jones? Tell me out. Who is Tommy Lee Jones? Agent K from Men in Black. Oh, oh. There you go. Wait, no, who? Oh my god. You you have a whole computer in front of you. Oh. Fine. Here. The old white man? Yeah. Oh, okay. Him. Yeah, I didn't know his name, but yeah, I can see that. But yeah, he's 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 getting up there in age because he's seventy three. Wait, you said he played who? Uh, remember the general towards the end that okay. got turned okay. into a shard? Yeah, yeah, him. I can't think of it. Um, or maybe you know who else mm. might actually be decent for that? Who? Thanos, Josh Berlin. Yeah, because yeah. he also played Cable, and Cable would would. Cable kind of fits that archetype. Mm-hmm. As much as I can't stand her, Scarjo would be Helga. No. Really? No. She's got the appearance for Angelina. it. Angelina. Mm? Angelina can act. I mean... She's not just Scarjo in a wig in another movie. <laughs> Angelina actually has, like, chops. True. She's Maleficent. <sighs> Sickening. She's Maleficent. If Angelina could be aged down a little bit for that, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Shirley's the oh. I can see Shirley's. Charlie's would also be a good choice. Um, and then, um, what's her fucking name? Look at a picture of this bitch. What's her name? Be nice. Uh, Joshua Sweet would have to be fucking Terry Crews. Terry Crews, John Boyega, Michael Ely. John Boyega? Yeah. For Dr. Sweet? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I can't see Boyega without hair. That's how he... That's how he normally is. John Boyega? Yeah. Has hair. I mean, I guess. he It's a buzz, but it's clearly grown out a little. He, he could buzz it completely off and be Josh. That would be... Michael like, Ely would be lit. Michael Ely has too much jawline. No, he does not. Are we think- too <laughs> much jawline? <laughs> For Joshua Sweet? Joshua Sweet's sure? character, with how, with how goofy... Have you seen Joshua Sweet's jawline? Have you seen Terry Crews be, be ridiculous? Uh, th- whatever. Anyway. Come on, Terry Crews' personality yeah, is Terry perfect. Terry Crews would be amazing, but not the only pick. Okay. Um, Morris Chestnut, too. Now you're just picking, picking no. everybody's Andy's, everybody's no, Andy crush. Morris Chestnut can act, too. Mm-hmm. And he, if, look at Morris Chestnut and look at, look at Joshua Sweet. Look, go. <sighs> um, Betty White as the, as the uh, switchboard operator. Yes. <laughs> because, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if he could pull off, if Morris Chestnut could pull off silly, then I'd go. For, I'd definitely have him for Joshua. He's a black uncle. He could pull off silly. Um, let me think. The mole. I can't think of the. Think cannot for the life of me think of the actor's name, but the guy that played Peter Pettigrew in the Harry Potter series. Oh. <sighs> I don't. I don't watch or read garbage. Yeah, I'm just because I can't think of his character's name from um, uh, Sweeney Todd right now. Him. Oh. He would be for perfect for, for the mole. Oh, the, okay. the French mole. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, God, I cannot. I'm, I'm so bad with remembering names for other actors. Because uh, if we can get a moderately younger version of... Um, oh, my God. What if we had, like, a rewrite of the dynamite guy into just, like, a uh, an obvious queen? Why, though? I mean, he's perfect. I love him. No, I'm just thinking, like, having Mateo Lane play the demolition guy. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. But be, like, the same character, but just a huge queen. I mean... Because, I mean, Mateo Lane is kind of a huge queen. I mean, but he doesn't have to act like it. Mateo Lane has also got body. (laughs) Is that what that is? Conventionally attractive body, but body. I was going to say, that's just someone with no meat on their bones and works out every once in a while. That's all that is. But anyway. You mean, the, the, never mind. Let me not be shady, because he's actually funny. <laughs> um, Who else am I think? Who else is in that movie? You got all the main ones, so that's about it. <laughs> uh, there's more, because, uh, uh, oh, Cookie. The, the cook, the chef, oh, yeah, the, the guy that yeah, made the slop yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't think of his name, but the dad from Sh- Shameless has to be him. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Let me see. <laughs> oh, Gaetan is the name of the mole. Okay, but it's uh, 
uh, uh, Angelina or uh, Charlie Theron as Helga Sinclair. Mm-hmm. Um, who would be Audrey? Who's Audrey? Audrey's the little, the younger Latina uh, mechanic. Oh. Who, if she so wasn't trash, options. I'd say Michelle Rodriguez. But Michelle Rodriguez is basura. So yeah. hard pass. Uh, oh my god, that's weird to think about. Uh, Nadoc's original voice was Leonard Nimoy, mm-hmm. who also passed away. He was. Um, let me see. I can't think of the. Can't think of anybody else who would be in there. Any of the main characters, because I mean, there's obviously the occasional Atlantean that pops up. Mm-hmm. Um, that's about all I got. All right. But you know, y'all let us let us know what you think in the comments, <sighs> or you know, in the Facebook com or in the Facebook post and the YouTube comments, what what have you. You know, let's uh, let's engage, let's chit chat, let's have a kiki. <laughs> Burpees. Sorry. You mean those terrible exercises? That are basically up downs from football with a push up. Oh yeah, those. Anyway, Treasure Planet. How mm. about that? All right, I can't wait to hear what you have. All right, so I have two people for where is she? I volunteer to play more. <laughs> Absolutely the fuck not. Uh, all because we could do that one line. Uh huh. <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne is Mr. Arrow. Let me pull up the cast for this. Because... The Rock one that dies. Spoilers. Bitch, the, the movie is is. Forever and three quarters. A lot of people haven't seen this movie. I mean, it's a sickening movie, though. So if you haven't, girl, go tell it on the mountaintop and find it on Disney Plus. Because this Treasure Planet is honestly one of my favorite movies, and it makes me cry from time to time, or with specific parts of the movie. You know what I just realized, though? Mm. Uh, Jim Hawkins looks like Keelick from Soul Calibur. Yeah, he does. All right, so I've got the characters up. Lawrence Fishburne is um, Mr. Arrow. Okay. You know who Lawrence Fishburne is? I know who Lawrence Fishburne is. I'm trying to see what the... Oh, the... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. Um, what is his name? Is the Spider-Boy. Richard, Dr- Richard Brake is Mr. Scroop, Spider-Man. <laughs> what? The Spider-Guy. Mr. Scroop. Mr. Scroot? Scroop. Scroop. Yeah, he kills. He kills. Um, oh, that one. Yeah. Ugh. Richard Brick. I just thought it thought more him more as like a demented looking lobster than anything. He's a spider. The... Yeah, he's definitely a spider. Though. Also, you can't categorize any alien creature in that movie. Like you know, the people that were designing those those creatures were playing D anD D. Every last one of them, because there's so many characters in there. Like, what the fuck is that? Well, I mean, the captain is a tabaxi, obviously. Yeah. Speaking of her, who did I put up? There's someone Honestly, very important. Andy Serkis is Ben, the robot. Yeah. Yeah, Andy Serkis. David Tennant as Delbert Doppler. I put him down as the only person I could think of. Isn't that the... the, the yes. The, the... Yes, the dog one. <gasps> David Tennant. Oh, bitch, that'd be perfect. David Tennant. It's the only person that could play him. At this point. That would um, be a door. Okay, we have to have... Please tell me you're thinking of having one of the companions be the captain then. No. <gasps> no. Because I could totally imagine... Uh, <coughs> a Doctor Who reference? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Where is my fucking... I know I just said... Because I would yeah, absolutely listen. have... Uh, uh, Catherine Tate be the captain then. If if Tennant is... is, Dilb- is D- 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 Dilbert Doppler... All right. Then Catherine uh, Tate has to be the captain. I said Haley Atwell. Haley Atwell. Why do I know that for name? For Captain Amelia. Who's Haley? Why do I know that name? I'm going to throw up real quick. Why do I know that name? You you should. I need to stop moving away from the mic. Hello. Um. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, it's not strapped to your head now, bitch. Mm-hmm. Why do I know the name Haley Atwell? What was she in? What else was she in? She's Peggy Carter. And, um, oh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. okay, yeah. okay. I still say Catherine Tate needs to be a uh, needs to be a. She's uh, got second the choice. face for it already. She really does. She has the face for Captain Amelia. I, um, uh, Catherine Tate, if, if nothing else, have the perfect s- snarky voice for her. Another option that I actually wrote down myself was Martin Short as Ben. 
But I'm pretty sure he played Ben in the first place. Uh, I'm pretty sure he did as well. So, that yeah. Martin Short did that. Played Ben perfect anyway. Ben is the... Uh, Robot. The bot- okay. yeah. 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 Jeffrey Dean Morgan is Long John Silver. Ooh. Yeah. Wait. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. That's the guy that played... Uh, oh, fuck. The guy with the bat from The Walking Dead, mm. I think. Yeah. Mm. Who somehow is also in Mortal Kombat. Mm. But anyway. Um, okay, I could see Walking that. Walking Dead and all that good shit. Mm-hmm. Who was he in Watchmen again? I forgot he was in Watchmen. He was? Yeah. Was he Rush Hour? The com- No, he played the comedian, I think. If Edward, he was in it. Edward Blake. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. That's it. Wow. Well, then, as far as voices for Morph, I'd probably pick Dee Andy Bradley S- Baker. <laughs> the one, the only one that does different fucking character sounds perfectly. Yeah. Oh, I forgot Jim's mother. Um, I don't know Emily why. Blunt? Yeah, I can see her doing it. Um, the list that I got a couple of mine from that I thought were good has fucking... Fuck's sake. They have Marissa Tomei. Oh. As his mom? Yeah. Eh, who did you say you wanted to have play Jim? I didn't pick a Jim. You didn't pick a Jim? No. Not yet? I, I can't pick a Jim. Would you want somebody like younger and up and coming? Yeah. Yeah. But if, I don't want nobody. Everybody keeps doing Tom Holland. And I'm like, no. No. Absolutely the fuck not. Actually, no. You're no, right. Absolutely the fuck not. They, they, a lot of fan castings of Treasure Planet have him and uh, Peter and Aunt May as... Jim Hawkins and his mom. And I hate it. Uh, Marissa, maybe. But Because she could probably do something serious for once. Mm-hmm. But, um... I don't... Tom Holland is not Jim Hawkins. You need someone rough. Something with a bit more of a... Uh... You, need, you need someone who can act and do shit. You need someone that can act with their eyes and tell a story without saying anything. No, he's and too... that's not yeah. common. Timothy Chalamet is too pretty. Jim... D- Fucking too pretty. Jim Hawkins is one of the sexiest fucking Disney characters ever made. What Timothy Chalamet about? is too pretty for that role. All he needs is a little fucking scruff of hair on his face, and he'd be fine. That jawline could cut diamonds, though. Diamonds. <laughs> oh, what about uh? Fuck. What's the guy's name from uh, Shameless? I haven't watched Shameless. So I don't know. Um. Oh my God. I cannot for the life of me think of his name. Uh, he's one of the he's one of the one of the main people in the cast, and it is going to aggravate me to absolutely no end because I can see his face, but I cannot think of his character's name. And I'm sure my ex will pop up and be judging me. Mm-hmm. Eh, actually, on second thought, now that I'm seeing him again, uh, uh, Jeremy Allen White, the guy that plays Lip Gallagher. That's who? Nah, he's. Oh. He, 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 mm, Maybe it's like a third choice. Also, Cookie for mine would be William H. Macy. I just had to pull up the guy's name because he's also on, you know, Shameless. For who, Jim? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, or maybe? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Okay. Um. That's it. That's it? That's all you got? Yeah. There's um, no other characters to really worry about. Unless you worry about the side ones, which I'm not. You could get anybody to play those. I just don't know who would play the, the lady who's just arms and shoulders and a head. Remember her? Head, shoulders, and that's it, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Head, shoulders. Head. Why are you like this? <laughs> and then I don't know who would play um, the guy who you thought, who you think is one character, and then it's like a head. The head and the torso are two different creatures, or two different creatures. I like them a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, There's like a guy with dreads or locks and. Turns out that that's the, and then uh, those the legs, legs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I don't know, like all those characters, a lot of people could play those. <laughs> True. So, I want to sneak Idris Elba, Elba somewhere in there. Why? Why not? It's Idris Elba. For who? Mm-hmm. Possible second choice for uh, Long John. Jim's dad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Jim's dad doesn't really have character. All you know is he left. Oh. You know, I'm actually not sure. You could sure. flesh that out a little more and have flashbacks with him and Jim as a kid. Like, that'd be good for the movie. That would help the movie a little bit. But. Oh, this is going to bother me because I would like to figure out who I'd want to play for uh, 
for a gym because yeah, I don't you know, know the Jim main character the main character is kind of a, tr- a kind of a hard one to pick out. You know what? I think I'm gonna make a post on the page. Yeah. After the episode drops. Yeah. You know, who do you think would make Jim a Hawkins. good Jim Hawkins? It's, that is not Tom Holland. Yeah. Tom Holland's out. Tom Holland is out. You know, somebody who we haven't mentioned who you would think make an excellent Jim Hawkins, both appearance wise and acting wise. Oh no, you know what that kid from everybody fucking hates him because oh there's a guy who hated on him because Ooh, I'll go into that later, but um, off the air. But he was in Power Rangers, and he's also in Stranger Things, the Red Ranger. Him. I'd have to see him again. Okay, because he could probably play Jim Hawk. He could probably actually pull you know, that off. You know, we don't. They don't necessarily have to look like the characters from Disney, the Disney movie, though. Yeah, that's true. So if we're expanding that slightly, who would you think? Hmm. Like, that's too many options now. Yeah, then now it goes from not enough to too many. Yeah, that's too fucking many. Um, why did I look up Jim Hawkins? Uncle? Well, I know who my husband is. Um, Sir. Red Ranger Power. Are you talking Rangers about the new Power Rangers movie? movie? Yes. Okay. The new one. What is his name? What is his name? Ooh, you know who would be a good one for Jim Hawkins uh, if you age him down a little bit? Hmm. The guy that played Kick Ass. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't think of his name right now, but. I don't know how to say his name, but Dar- Dar- Let me see. Dar- Let me see. Dar- Let me see. him. Minus the that. Oh, happening. that mustache is a choice. Yeah, it really is. And I really <laughs> hate him with it. Because without the mustache, he looks fine. Mm hmm. Like. Go ahead and be thirsty. Where's. Aaron Taylor Johnson. That's it. Like, he could play Jim. He could play Jim Hawkins. He's also got the acting chops to do it, though. That's the only reason I say that. He's got the chops to do it. He can play a fucking distressed character. Also, the other guy from Stranger Things. I don't know. Aaron Taylor Johnson might make a good Jim Hawkins. Yeah, he could. Just is cute enough t- to do it. Mm-hmm. Like, he's got a little bit of an edge to him. You know like, I feel like he has to be cute. Is that bad? <laughs> I feel like he has to be cute. Yeah, especially with his hair grown out a little bit, I could definitely see it. Mm-hmm. Give him the, the haircut. If, it, if Listen, like whoever funds this at Disney, if you don't keep that haircut that Jim Hawkins has, I, will, the, co- I will come and kill you. The, 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 the I long, will murder the you. The long on top with the rat tail? Yeah, I will murder you if you don't keep that haircut. <laughs> like, it's iconic because he cuts it off as kind yeah, of a character development. You cut, he cuts end. it off, yeah. Anyway, that's that on that. Mm-hmm. Um... Um, Is there any so, other news happening? Not really, but guess what I finally saw? What? A Quiet Place. Yeah, oh god. Oh, Jesus. It's a really well done movie, sound-wise. Sound-wise, like... I, there sound were design mul- is genius. There were multiple... Now, granted, I had the sound, like, super low, because I actually uh, watched it with a new acquaintance of mine. Why'd you have the sound low? Because it wouldn't have really mattered, given the company I was in. Okay, but you would have been able to. It was just loud enough for me to hear, but I was. You um, gotta have it turned all the way up. I might watch it again with some headphones. It's the sound design. It's I so, might it, watch it again with some headphones. It makes that movie so much more terrifying. Oh, with it the was. Sound. It was already. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I love it. But the the sign language in the movie was actually really good. Mm-hmm. Um, I had some gripes with it because, like, it a lot of it, a lot of the framing was on the characters' faces and not on their hands. Mm-hmm. So, like, you could only see, like, the equivalent of me, like, hiding behind the speaker and you would see part of me signing. Yeah. And But the subtitles would still be read at the bottom. Yeah. Um, but uh, a new acquaintance is deaf and we watched the movie. And, like, when he came over, I'm like, uh, my sign is okay, I guess. <laughs> and he's like, you're doing fine. You're trying really hard. You're doing great, sweetie. Literally. <laughs> He's a sweetheart, though. Mm-hmm. Um, but then after that, we started watching Loving Vincent. Do you not know about that movie? I feel like I do, just not by name. Loving Vincent is a movie surrounding the death of Vincent Van Gogh. Yes, okay. or Van okay. Gogh. That's the one that looks like his paintings. Looks like. Or it, no, no, honey. Every single frame well, in I, that movie well, is I an oil that, painting. I know that, but I mean, like, it looks like Vincent Van Gogh's paintings. Yeah. I want to smoke the biggest bowl and watch that movie. 
it is because we both agree. Is anyone else surprised? Because I'm not. No, 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 no. But just because of the way the paintbrush strokes and everything move with each character kind of moving across the screen, even it's something that like I'm watching this stone sober and I'm like, oh my god, this is this is this is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I wanted to watch that. I just didn't really like care to watch it. Guess what? It's on. Hmm. Hulu. Oh, cool. I just stopped paying for that. <laughs> I have Disney Plus. I don't need Hulu. Well, anymore. I mean, you've got the rest of the month. Oh, yeah, true. I'll watch it eventually. Yeah, watch it like. Watch in the next couple days. But make sure you're awake because a lot of it is, and I'm just going to warn you now, so slight spoilers. Um, a lot of the movie is, I don't know what happened. Go ask this person. I don't know what happened. Go ask this person. So it's Be- like a point and click from the 90s. A little bit. But it's <laughs> like the protagonist is trying to figure out the situation surrounding Vincent's death. Yeah. Um, and it's like I said, a lot of it is, you know, this is what I know. The rest I don't know. Go talk to this person. This is what I know and so on and so forth. And I played Nancy Drew games, so this just sounds like a walk in the park for me. Mm-hmm, but oh my God, that movie is beautiful. Like, there's a friend of mine who I might be like, hey, I've got Hulu now. Let's have a kiki and play with your dog and watch that movie. Oh, my God. Um, Because I know that they absolutely adore Vincent. And we both were, speaking of Vincent, though, the the, that Doctor Who episode featuring him. uh, Oh, my God. Like, I'm over here just, I'm just a little emotional just thinking about it. All right, cool. We'll start those tears back up because we're about an hour and a half. So what else do you want to talk about today? That, I actually don't have anything else to talk about this time, do you? Or did we talk about, or did we mention something? Talking back and forth. I don't remember. Let me check our logs really quickly to make sure. Um, oh, but before we move on to anything loud and angry and stuff, you know, uh, thoughts of health and good vibes to John Lewis. Um, he was recently very, very, like, it was announced about an hour and a half ago that he was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. Yes. I just saw that myself. Um, yeah, I don't have anything offhand, but I am going to... Cats the movie got patched. Yeah. I was going to rant about that. I said, I said this, and I was talking to my coworker at work, hey husband, I love you. Um... (sighs) I knew the minute they pulled or that they delayed Sonic the Hedgehog because because everybody shitted on how that movie looked, mm-hmm. that they were going to start just like while movies were in theaters. I said this. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're going to start doing it while movies are in theaters. They're going to just upgrade the movie and then re- like release it while it's still in theaters. I knew it. We love What that. happens with cats? What happens with cats? That exact situation. Now, I feel like the cats fiasco was a publicity thing. Mm-hmm. Sonic was not. Mm-hmm. But I feel like they looked at that with the idea of it being a publicity thing. Oh, why don't we do that for while it's in the theater still? Because there's no way that y'all released that movie half ass like that. There's no way you did with how much money you had. There's no way you did that. You'd be surprised how many but, mistakes get through. But it's that. It's That's the problem. Tiny mistakes getting through that you can see. If you pay attention, yeah. You shouldn't have characters whole ass unanimated bodies around in the movie like that's at that that point i realized oh y'all are doing this for publicity y'all wanted this to be in the news that it's getting patched Mm -hmm. (laughs) in real time um i don't want to see that fucking movie anyway but i said i said it that like once sonic happened they're gonna start doing it now like disney's gonna do i don't think disney's got too big of an ego to do that but other the other Studios that haven't been bought out by Disney's Monopoly yet are probably going to do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think media and like movies and stuff will officially be terrifyingly monopolized once Disney owns like Universal or something. Because that'd be terrifying. A little that'd bit. be that would be petrifying for me. Yeah, it's already a little startling that they bought like a Everybody. bunch of people. But they have—they don't have Sony and they don't have Universal and there's a couple of small ones they don't have. They've got Fox. Mm-hmm. They've got Lucasfilm. Yep. They've got Pixar. I mean, Lucasfilm isn't that big of an acquisition because that shit was trash anyway. But still, Lucasfilm was actually the or, or uh, uh, Lucasfilm's uh, special effects is who did the design the creatures for A Quiet Place. Based off of Venom and Carnage, just in case you guys didn't know that. Why are we trying to do ASMR? 
like so. <laughs> <laughs> it like picks all of that up too. That's disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. Wow. <sighs> um. Yeah, those creatures are fucking terrifying. I love them. <laughs> I love. I love the symbiotes. Yeah. You know? Do you like that theory? Oh, I didn't tell you this theory. Um. They sealed themselves in. Like they they fuck themselves over in that movie at the end. The warning lights have a buzz to them. You can hear it. Oh. They they did themselves in. Because because by ma- having that constant buzz going, it's something for them to That's to why they that's why them. so many of them they weren't really like looking for the lights. Because they But can't. they were like, What is that? And so they'll be in the area. Mm-hmm. I feel like they really fucked themselves over with that. They would have known that. To but, a point, but then they figured out the weakness. Yeah. Which is what was it? High pitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is makes sense. A hundred percent the weakness. Oh my god, that is weakness of of the the symbiotes. symbiotes. Yeah. Oh my god, I didn't even realize that. Yeah, they're they're the symbiotes, and they even look like venom. Yeah, they mainly look like venom. Not so much with Carnage. Carnage looks weird. Wasn't Carnage a lot more body horror though? Carnage is just bloody and gory. Yeah, but wasn't Carnage a lot more body horror, whereas uh, Venom was still... What exactly do you mean by body horror, though? Weirdly proportionate limbs, different cu- number of uh, fingers. Not really, no. Carnage was just more blood and guts and was willing to get into it and, like, bathe in that. Like, that was Carnage. Venom was not so much that way. The most violent thing, which is touched on in the movie, is that he eats people's fucking brains. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a very specific thing that he eats, is people's brains in the comics. Because mm-hmm. there's a there's a similar chemical in the brain that's in chocolate, which is why, at first, the symbiote wants to eat brains. And then it... It and Eddie find out that chocolate has the same chemical, so that's why the symbiote is in the, in Eddie Brock are constantly eating chocolate. They touch on it at the end of the movie when he's in the gas and when he's in the corner store, and he goes, "What do you want? Tater tots and chocolate." That's like a reference to the comic books. You are such a nerd, and I'm here for it. Thank you. It's not like I've wanted to fuck Venom since I was oh like my ten, God. ten years old. Why are you? But I, you have a whole pitcher of water over there. If you want, and since I you're so thirsty. Out. Shit. Uh huh. I upgraded and brought a uh, brought br- 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 <laughs> brought a bought a Brita filter. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at me. I have Beyonce syndrome, man. So since you, you don't have anything to rant about, are you with running, me, lions? I, <laughs> is Simba. Is that really you? <laughs> Beyonce, Beyonce, man, we love you. We love you. Oh You're my iconic, God. But you know what? Oh, oh that hurt. <laughs> so did hearing it the first time. Honestly. Although, I'm not going to knock her. She didn't do horrible in that movie. It wasn't Foxy Cleopatra all over again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And also, was she was also in another animated movie. What's it called? Epic? Mm-hmm. She was a fairy queen, and she just sounded like she was just reading a book. <laughs> just, just like, I love Beyonce. But that was like... But it's not like she can't act, though. Because mm-hmm. let us not forget... Um, what was that movie called? When she beat the white woman's ass because she was cheating on her husband, Idris Elba? Or that she was trying to get what, the crazy white bitch. It was, it was, it was basic. It was fatal attraction, but for black people. What is that movie called? Are you about to look up Beyonce's uh, uh, filmography? Just typing that will help me figure it out. Obsessed. Oh, have you oh, seen that movie? I have. Do you not. remember that? Oh. <laughs> 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 See, Beyonce actually has acting chops. She does. And she shows it in that movie. Like, she has, like, a whole range of, like, emotions Ooh. going on. Yeah, like, a whole range. <laughs> mm-hmm. Several of them. And Idris is... Idris. He's Idris Elba. He can act. His accent slips a couple times in that movie, and that always makes me laugh. Mm-hmm. Especially when people don't realize he's fucking... British? Yeah. Yeah. I think people are just too busy realizing that he's just... <sighs> I mean, not so much anymore... Oh no, he is uh he is aging like whiskey. <laughs> what? So anyway, you're gonna wrap up the show now. 
<laughs> Bitch, I guess. Because I was having fun just kiki or whatever, but yeah, we are running a little long. Don't bit lit look. The, 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 is that really you? <laughs> Why are you like this? In T Hui. <clears throat> that wraps up another episode of the Baldwin Kids. If you've got any questions, comments, great ideas, or just want to say hi, feel free to shoot us a like and a DM on our Facebook and Instagram pages. You can also get a hold of me on the Twitter and catch some hands on PSN. I'm on both as the Iron Magnus. That's T H E I R O N M A G N U S. Is that really you? Stop. <laughs> um. I'm on Instagram as Vesta with two underscores. All my music is available everywhere. Just look for Vesta and look for the really weird, creepy um, avatar. Yeah. Don't spoil where the mask is from. It's a, it's a Cleopatra mask. Um, I have a collaboration project. Yeah, coming out on the first. I sing vocals on the Mr. Friends. Oh, song. shit. I, y'all already oh. heard it, but... Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's on the first. That's on New Year's. It's dropping on the second the ball drops, just like Mariah Carey's performance the last few years. Um, and... You you leave Mimi alone. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I have a few projects in the works coming soon. Yeah. Mimi. Yeah. And a performance. Yeah, and a performance on the 4th. But do if we, y'all in the area get into it. Do we want to drop details for said performance? Oh, yeah, yeah, because the... So I'm performing at the Gallery Cabaret. It's the only bar in Chicago with that name. And I'm. it starts at 9 o'clock, I believe. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a late show, so y'all girls that have curfews like Kay here um, probably won't be able to... Anyway, yeah. With how much sleep I sacrificed to see that last show. That's true, yeah. Because I was ready for Death's Embrace. You really were. You were not here for any of it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Is that all you got? Yeah. Any other performances? Any other sickening music to give us? No. I'm not telling any details of the stuff that I'm working on by myself. Oh. Well, in that case, we are independent black creatives, and we will see y'all next time. Drink drink some water. Take your meds, have a good 2020, and do better. Bye-bye. We'll see y'all next time.